Good evening, traders. Welcome to the October Traders Panel. My name is Ingela Trainer. Um, well, welcome. You know, I hope everyone's well. What a great month of trading. It's been uh, quite nice. It's nice to see the volatility pick up finally uh, and give us a little bit more oomph to the market. Um, so I hope everyone's been doing well. Remember, at the end of the month, as we need to do every single, at the end of every trading day, every trading week, every trading month, Ask yourself, what did you do well and what can you do better? Okay, so, uh, at, so for the newer members, the, this support webinar I do once a month. Uh, it's nice to connect in with the members. It's nice to um, be able to interview, and the purpose of it is, is actually to interview our community members. And for you guys to see firsthand, what are other traders doing? reached out to Carleen, um, you know, quite a number of weeks ago because I just have sort of felt that you'd be very interesting to have on the panel and to be interviewed and to share your journey, share, you know, where are you at um, and how you're, how you're sort of progressing. And uh, so I've got a little bit of a questionnaire to run you through. Uh, so I suppose we could probably uh, start with that. It's probably always a good place to start, isn't it? So uh, welcome, welcome. Colleen, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about your trading history and um, when did you actually even first decide to become a trader? Where, where, what was that all about and when did that happen? Well, I've done zero trading before, IDTA, like nothing. Um, I've been a personal trainer and own gyms like since I was 19. So, um, yeah, it was, it was COVID year 2020. And my dad has been a member of IDTA for since with Lockie before it started. So he's always been like, you should join up, like you can make good money from it and that sort of thing. And I've always said no. And and then um, when COVID hit and then our gym was like shut for so long and that, and then I was like, nah, there has to be some other way to like make money that is COVID proof. Um, yeah, and that where the like, because during COVID, the government actually paused the bank's accounts for the gym as well. So you actually couldn't wow. trade as a gym. And that was a real eye-opener. And so that made me wow, think. I didn't know that. They even went that far. Jeez. I remember when it was on the news that, well, because we were in the Northern Territory then, and they said gyms and cafes to close from Monday at midday. I got in there and I was like, I'm going to get there early Monday, get lots of stuff done. The payments done, and then I looked, and everything was already frozen. That is and that's super like, cheeky. Yeah, and then we were ringing billing companies, and they're like, "You legally can't trade, so everything is off." And we were just like, "Okay." <laughs> so that um, that that got me thinking, and then it was December twenty twenty. Um, yeah, I contacted Mary, and I was like, "Yep, um, I should sign up for this." And, so how, and, and your father is? Carl Dag. Oh, great. So how long has Carl been um, with IDTA for, for trading? From the beginning, and then he was with Lockie. He learned Lockie's before Lockie had the, with IDTA. Right, okay. So he's been the whole great. time with it. Great, great, great. Excellent. So have yeah. you had any exposure to the language? Did, did you ever listen to your dad or you were just like, no, nah, don't want don't, don't to know about it kind of thing? There's a few times I sort of stayed up and, and look at candlesticks and that sort of thing, but I never, never took much um, interest. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. when I signed up, I did nothing at all until November 21. Wow. Yeah. What were you doing for that whole year? <laughs> well, we're still, I had the gym and then it got closed down another couple of times in right. 21 as well. So I was flat out with that and just didn't put any time into it. And then we right. actually right. decided it was October 21 and we we um, packed it all up and moved to the sunny coast. And that was when I was like, okay, now I get a fresh start. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's when I did Accelerator in November. Great, great. Well, you really have progressed extraordinarily well in such a short period of time, which is fantastic. So um, just got to make sure I'm reading these questions. So just 
going back a little bit, say, with your journey with IDTA, because you, so you've done Accelerator. Have you done any of the other pro programs? Yeah. So then after I went live in March this year, um, then I worked out, yep, I need some help. So I've had like, uh, I did have coaching session with Johnny from Bali. And then I also did like um, a six course of one-on-ones with um, Danny and Marky Danny. B. Yeah. And then I did, I've just done platinum in September. Great. But the one-on-one -on -one coaching is what like changed everything for me. Excellent. And really yeah. refined. What, what about the coaching was it that kind of what was the, your little epiphany things that your light bulbs that went off, do you think? I think what because was the within that? I didn't have a very um, detailed trading plan and I was I would trade, I wasn't really clear on the exact signal I was trading. Mm -hmm. So I was trading as uh, I go with more the picture setup. And then Danny's like, well, you're trading an SBR there. And so I was like, okay, well, that's what I've been trading. That seems to go well. Um, and then I would hand back my ticks in the in the session. And so after that month of that, then Danny's like, okay, do give me a hundred trades um, of the one trade. And so that's what I did. And then after that, that just I saw that return in the sim account. And then I'm just like, I just got to replicate that live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, Danny is an amazing coach. I don't know if she's online tonight, but I think she'd like, she, she's incredible. So uh, that's, you were certainly under the, the right uh, framework there. And even Marky B is amazing as well. So you've kept it fairly simple, haven't you? What... Because we, I love that IDTA say, you know, really focus in on your process. And I suppose that's what you started, started figuring out with the, your, your signal set and things like that. So give me a little bit of insight into um, about, about your signal set or, or what have you done to refine it or to, um, to affect, well, maybe tell everyone a little bit about it, actually. It's probably a bit good, better idea. Tell well, me about what is your trading style. I mean, I know what it is, but... What, tell everyone about what your trading style is, what your market, what your uh, session is, etc. So I practiced um, <clears throat> live market replaying the um, euro, the pre-euro, um, because that's when I was noticing, and with confirmation from Marky B, like that SBRs were setting up in the pre-market. So then once I um, did enough live market replay on that, um, so my setup is very simple. I'm just a, a static bar reversal off of a pivot um, or now of uh, with confirmation of the 15-minute chart. And if there's a 15-minute chart SBR set up as well, then it's like not guaranteed, but it's going to go the larger tick amount. Larger move, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sort of momentum. Yeah, so I had been like holding... As, um, a 60 stop and I would hold it for the entire trade and depending so you, you on the so you wouldn't trail your stop you just ho have the that stop regardless no. if it's the if the failure point was say 40 ticks you'd still have it 60 is that what you're saying uh I ha uh I will mean? bring it in if if everything's failed that day it's at 40 I will bring it down a little bit, probably up about 10 out from it. Right. Excellent. Yeah. But that's been the majority of my trading, just leaving it. But I will have to wait sometimes, can wait an hour, and then the trade will be filled. Yeah. But in, in once I'm in the open, uh, Euro open, um, I do now run an ATM as well. Because so sometimes it has gone 96. Do you hold your position across the European Open? I, that di I did. A, yeah. Yeah. Um, for a lot of my trades. And just recently I've stopped. Unless an SBR sets up right before um, maybe at like quarter two or ten two, I will get in on that. Right, okay. Yeah. But now the like it's definitely changed quite a bit in the last few months, the market. 
It does, doesn't it? And I think that's what's important as a trader to find that flexibility, not to be too rigid. Um, and so did you say it's in the last few weeks, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, and it's also too, I found, I found with my trading method, like from sort of like April to end of August was quite quiet, which is obviously everyone found that with the volatility. But, yeah, that your method can change through various times of the year as well. So you, what might work for yeah. a few months or a few weeks, then you need to shift gears. And, and but yeah. keeping records of it because you'll find that sort of as the years roll over, you'll sort of see these things coming out again. So because yeah, I did notice, and so I had drops um, sometimes in the pre market my target to fifty instead of the hundred. Okay, so so you have a fixed hundred target or fifty? Is that right? Yeah. 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 So and is that based on PBI or what are you basing uh, that on? Yes. Or just, the, the a little pattern. bit of PBI and then also what um, um, fib extension on the 15-minute chart, if it's failed at one of them, then that will adjust it because it will then normally just reverse to the opposite way fib extension. Right. So you, yeah. you got your fibs going as well? Yeah, but yeah. I'm the worst at fibs. <laughs> So I only can draw the 15-minute fib extensions and I normally on the 60-minute chart and the even the 15-minute chart for the retracements, I'll take a picture and I'll send it to my, like, platinum group and Peter or Lorna or someone will say, yay or nay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the great thing with being in the community. There's so many people you can kind of, they've been there, done that, and you can um, just get that level of understanding because you said that at the beginning. And, and I think that's the three things I always say to people. First, you need to know that you understand your method because I've seen, even I've done it myself, Practice people are practising over the years the wrong thing. You know, you think you've got it right in your head and then, you know, a year later you're like, oh, my God, I've had that completely wrong, you know. So that understanding is very, very important. I um, think it's just to help refine it, like with having platinum and then learning a bit more with the larger charts and the fibs. Like all my, um, I need to go back all my 100 tick trades and see that went to target, like, were there other fibs at play? Because I never used fibs yes. until after platinum. And now it's like a whole nother ball game. You can get a, a bit more accurate with your target and exit. Yes, yes. Uh, Amanda's asking what market are you trading? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And... Ryu Tito says, when you say 15-minute confirmation, are you also looking for SBR on the 15-minute chart as well? So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, so um, so the market is the NQ. The session is the pre-euro and into the euro. Um, so you're trading the SBR is your entry. Your exit's a, a, like a target, like a fixed target, either like a 50 or a 100. Yeah. Do you ever... And do, do you have a maximum risk to failure or so say, for example, if the your entry, the risk to failure is, say, 100 ticks, but you wanted to 60 tick, 60 tick, do you just not take that trade or do you just have your 60 ticks I, floating? If it's got another? a confirmation on the other chart, I will um, wait for the retrace and rejection and I'll put my stop on that and I will probably put, and I'll put a smaller target. Mm, okay. Normally the target will be the 133. Okay. Um, I've got here, yeah, do, you, do you risk your trades? And, and if so, why? Or if not, why not? But you've kind of already answered that, that um, you will sometimes move your, well, I suppose you, that's if your stop loss is further away. Did you answer that? Whether if you do, do you risk along the way? Yeah, and, during, area, the, and during the open, I want, yeah, once the market opens, um, I'll have that risk. But then once it goes 80%, it brings it up to a plus 20. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm happy to just take 20 if that happens. Because sometimes it has gone like, it might go 90 ticks and then turn the other way and I have yeah. been stopped. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it is, can, it, those open, the opening candle and, 
and even news um, related or red flag news can just send it crazy in that market. So it's probably yeah. a good idea. And that's the thing about really understanding your session timeframe because they are so different. They, they're so unique with the different nuances around them. Yeah, um, yeah so I did it, try in the beginning every session. I jumped yeah. in all of them um, and then I just liked this one. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And that, yeah, and that's the thing. There's no way you can kind of um, get good across all of them necessarily. I mean, it depends on what you're doing, really. Mm. Um, but they, I sort of find that the nuances can, you know, obviously the US closed, you're going to have to have such much wider stops. And so, yeah, get good at one thing first, and you might finally need to go anywhere anyway. So, um, what's your average time in trade? Um, in the in the pre market, it's around twenty five to forty five minutes. Okay. Yeah, and then once in the open, it's between five and twenty. Good. Good. Yeah. Um. So this is another little thing I was sort of thinking because everyone's kind of different with their backgrounds, like say. Some people have, you know, struggle with the technology side of things, learning the indicators, learning how to place trades and moving things around. Um, sometimes people struggle with the mindset thing. Sometimes it's more the strategy. Out of those sorts of things, what do you feel that you've struggled with most maybe? Like what's been hard for you? Um, FIPS, I find. <laughs> <laughs> I like it before trading without them. Because um, sometimes like, they are in the wrong spot. Um, that's why I do like just off pivots because at least it's not based on where I put it. Um, yeah, and at the, at the start of any, like, losses is accepting it. But I've kind of sensed, like, platinum and I've been watching, like, all the videos of um, you interviewing different traders and seeing, like, the guys, like, have – um massive amount of like contracts on and that and I'm like their tr their mindset is at a whole nother level so there's like a high performance mindset that we've got to get to so it really shifted after platinum and I'm like it's just like um when you're training in the gym for a competition like I used to compete in bodybuilding competitions and um like when I went to the world titles, like you just, you don't cheat on your plan at all. You've got your plan and you stick to it and you don't cheat because you're going for a play scene at the end of the day. And I'm like, I have to apply the, the exact same thing to trading. I can't cheat on it mm -hmm. because I've already got the plan that I've proved has worked. If I'm cheating on it, then it's the same as cheating on my diet or training in the gym. I'm not going to get yeah. there. Yeah, and then like, I, and even with the loss, like I had an epic week last week, um, and it's amazing what you can earn from trading. Like it's life changing. But then I had a loss on Tuesday, um, and I was like, well, if I'm happy to accept that amount of income in a week, I have to accept to have some big losses at some stage. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. they also weren't from, um, and then when we had the advanced coaching with Lockie, a number of people took the same trades and had losses on the exact same trades. Um, and so now I know exactly why, so I can prevent that from happening. And I'm glad it happens now on like four contracts or something instead of like 30 contracts. That's right. Well. Exactly. And, and too, at the end of the day, it's kind of like, you know, horses for courses in a way where, you know, you go, you're going to experience, I mean, it's all relative, you know, as it's all relative. You're going to have, like, it doesn't matter what number of contracts on because your, your wins with that number of contracts is going to be it's amplifying the profits and it's going to be the same amplification with the losses. As long as you don't switch things around too much yeah. um, and you've got a good solid plan that you're comfortable, it's, 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 you can pretty much forget the contracts out of the window. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and that's just a really a little bit of a hurdle we need to get over. So Amanda asked there, do you go for short range target if no longer range target is setting up or do you wait for possible long range opportunity? 
I actually just wait for long range. Um, the only time is on a Friday, I will just set it like a 20 tick target because Friday has proven to be like not a good day. So then I'll just go for um, 20 ticks because it pretty much on the on the um, open, it pretty much does go 20 ticks on an SBR as long as you've actually picked an SBR. Sounds like someone's collecting data, which I like to hear. You know, you yeah. know what you're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you know, I can hear I can hear the language of a statistical person. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> You're very good. Okay. Um, trading psychology. So what um, what has been your biggest challenge in the trading mindset space? Mm, what did I put down? Where? Is not be like not being romanced into more trades. Definitely. And um depending who's moderating, some I can get more excited and get romanced into something. But yeah, if I I've got like on my thick I've got all these like charts around me and like graphs of the ticks and where I want to be. So I have to look at them every time before my session to like make me stick with it and not get romanced so um what like what have you actually done to integrate what have you integrated into your routine to sort of help you with this like have you got something that's kind of um yeah well either in a like a physical sense or like how, how do you sort of over how have you overcome that in the past well I just have a routine that I clear up my desk so it's like a clear space because I've definitely come in before and rushed and everything's been messy and then I find that that's carried on through to how I've traded. So I have clear space and I have all my ticks um, weekly and monthly and all that running on a, on a whiteboard on my wall and up there I, every day I write I am a disciplined trader and so I write that and then I get here and then I have a look and I've got like my vision board and everything around my um, big screen and all the big goals I've got. And I always look at this one quote I've got then. It says, don't fear failure, fear being in the exact same place next year as you are today. I love that. <laughs> and I always think how disappointed I would be if I, I was the same trader that I was when I started in March. Um, if I'm like, if I'm that trader, I was in March, mm. in March next year, like I'd just be disappointed. Mm. And having having regular goals and like milestones in, you know, that you can achieve, achievable bite-sized chunks, really. Yeah, yeah. And that's brilliant. I like, I like that. Um, and yeah, exactly. I like what Kelly says, you know, how you do one thing, you do all things. And if you haven't got your, like the kitchen tidy, the bed made, and things organised before you come to your trading room. <laughs> you, um, yeah. you, it just feels like you're coming in in a in a mess. So yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. so important. I mean, I used to be a really messy person, and um, you know, just one of those people that collected too many things, couldn't throw stuff out, and and it's just it becomes you've got to become the person that you want to you know, or, or yeah. what you're trying to achieve so and that's not just while you're sitting here in front of the charts it's all throughout your whole life so yeah because um, after listening to a lot of like those amazing traders that you've interviewed like with the high performance stuff that's made me go back to all the principles i know drinking the enough water every day taking care of my health i always have infrared saunas every week um, I am lucky I only just do trading. I know I was going to say, you've got, you've got quite a good help. background there. <laughs> you know yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> I know who to come to for some health and fitness advice. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably the laziest person there is. But, um, well, now I, I, I just call cool myself a day trader. Reading. Hey? I only call myself a day trader now, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what is, finally, like what's your best bit of nugget of advice for your fellow traders? Um, well, I wrote down, find your one trade and really master it um, 
because I think then you're just going to practice it and practice it multiple times. Your live market replay, you can almost like obsess over it, but just, yeah, become the master of that one trade, um, I think is really good. And then after that, if you want to do others, but really one trade does pay really well um, once you master it and um, and stick with the one session. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Mine's Very like good. super simple. It's nothing. Yeah. Thanks, Carly. So thanks, Carly. So lovely thanks. to have you on this evening. Thanks for your time. And, and I just congratulations on where you're at. I mean, you've, you're streets ahead. started in March um my trading plan was to trade the any trade lucky called <laughs> and Not too many of them that's right and if you don't if you haven't practiced any of them or got the right stop or anything like it's not going to work no yeah no. you're just on rapid fire really and it's, yeah. emotionally you can't have focus when you're you just your attention's getting pulled left right and center but when you know what you're looking for and that's what that whole uh, say in the LTI is that you have to allow the market to come to you. You know, you can't force yeah. it. You can't force it. When you just sit there and patiently wait and if it, there's something, uh, uh, there's a setup and it's not exactly yours, and sure, it can go in your direction, but if it's not your setup, it's not you. That's not your profit. You didn't miss out on anything because it's not you and just let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And I think if you if people are struggling or are struggling to like make money from trading like you have to have a coach mm. you just you have to make the investment um because it's your business yeah. you're always going to put an investment into your business and then it will always pay back so just look at look at it as an investment that's going to pay back tenfold down the track yeah wise words well that's it i mean it's like any uh, sporting professional or even in the bodybuilding competition realm your door's opening there. You've got someone cheap coming in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that's exactly it, you know, um, that you can't do things on your own. You need someone to observe you and your results. And that's why we do, you guys will see with the coaching that we do, it's kind of similar to the trade watch where the coaches have insight into what you're doing. They can see your charts. They can see what you're up to. Because unless you're transparent and accountable, you it's just, it's just lengthening out the process for you to be successful. So you're only yeah. doing, you know, it's unjust to yourself. Um, yeah, that's true. And that's what it is all just about you and the market. And until you step up to the plate that way, you're just going to be tripping over yourself constantly. Thanks again, Carleen. Lovely to Thank see you. you. <laughs>